Ukraine to resist uh, Russian aggression. Wow. This is a very painful conclusion, but we need to do it because we now have enormous evidence to support this statement. We have to have you back very soon to lay out that evidence in greater detail because this is uh, this is really a fraud that's been perpetrated on our country. Uh, to say nothing of uh, a great disservice, I think, to people fighting for their freedom in Ukraine. Andrei Ilarinov, thank you for your great work at the Center for Security Policy. We will talk with you again soon. We'll talk with the rest of you. I hope again next time. Till then, go forth and multiply. to this Real America's Voice news break, I'm Terrence Bates. The judge's ruling in the Hunter Biden case has the political world buzzing this morning. The reaction from the right is largely, well, it's about time. In case you happen to miss it, what was supposed to be a routine hearing for Hunter Biden to accept the plea agreement and the judge to rubber stamp it turned out to be just the opposite. It ended with the judge saying that she can't accept the deal and the first son pleading not guilty to tax charges, even after admitting in court that he knew he didn't pay his taxes. Then there's the issue of the entire Hunter Biden investigation being slow walked for what appear to be political reasons. This is an absolute uh, corrupt DOJ that's politicized, that is one standard for Democrats, a different standard for Republicans. And thankfully, we had a judge that is asking some questions about, uh, I don't see how this is a reasonable deal, given the facts, the circumstances and the evidence. Meantime, the White House is spinning the story, saying that first son Hunter Biden is a private citizen and the legal challenges are a personal matter for him. The White House press secretary also adding that the case is being handled independently by the Justice Department, which many on the right believe has been corrupted. Aliens are real and they have landed here on Earth. That's one of the headlines out of Wednesday's congressional hearing on UFOs, which the government now calls Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon, or UAPs. Three witnesses appeared before the House Oversight Committee's National Security Subcommittee and testified that the White House has withheld information about alien crafts for years. Here's one exchange involving a Republican South Carolina Congresswoman Nancy Mace. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? 
non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Uh, the controller told us that these objects uh, had been observed for over two weeks, coming down from over 80,000 feet, rapidly descending to 20,000 feet, hanging out for hours, and then going straight back up, for those who don't realize, above 80,000 feet is space. A bipartisan group of House lawmakers is calling for more information from the military and intelligence agencies about UAPs. They claim that those same agencies have stonewalled them for years with a system of overclassification that's keeping reports of unexplained flying anomalies from the public. Arizona remains under a deadly heat wave as the number of confirmed heat-related deaths just in Phoenix alone is now up to 25 people. Nearly 250 more deaths remain under investigation to determine if the extreme heat in that area is a culprit. The heat wave has seen, the heat wave has, uh, has seen average daytime highs of about 110 degrees and nighttime lows not dropping beyond 90 degrees. Maricopa County, which includes the city of Phoenix, is reporting seven new heat-related deaths in the last 10 days. And during the same time last year, there were about 38 deaths associated with the heat. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl's court-martial for walking off of his post in Afghanistan only to be captured by the Taliban is voided. Bergdahl's 2017 conviction and dishonorable discharge after spending five years as a Taliban prisoner was overturned on Tuesday, with the presiding judge saying the military judge who was over the initial court-martial failed to disclose that he was applying to be a federal immigration judge while presiding over that case. In his ruling, the judge determined that fact alone could create the appearance of potential bias, given that then-President Donald Trump's criticism of Bergdahl. Quote, this case presents a unique situation where the military judge might be inclined to appeal to the president's expressed interest in the plaintiff's conviction and punishment when applying for the immigration judge position. Well, interest rates are at a 22-year high thanks to the Fed's latest quarter, quarter percent hike. The move comes as inflation remains higher than the central bank's 2% goal. And while some economists are predicting Wednesday's rate hike will be the last of this cycle, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is doubling down on the idea that the mission of reining in interest rates and inflation still isn't accomplished. This latest rate hike, by the way, is the Fed's 11th in its 12 meetings, or its last 12 meetings. Well, that's going to do it for your head. Headlines. As always, we appreciate having you along for the ride. I'm Terrence Bates. We're going to take a quick break, then get you back to your regularly scheduled programming. I'm Steve Durr, your soldier of truth, your tip of the spear, ready to fight for you for the foxhole of freedom. That's what we do here every day, asking the questions you wish somebody would. Well, I will. I'll give you better analysis defending this great nation than anyone else. It's the Steve Durr Show. Here are three big things you need to know right now to start your day. Number one. Hey, just in time for the weekend, the U.S. government has greenlit the sale of so-called lab-grown meat, or as it will be labeled, cell cultivated in some twisted effort to save the world. Yummy. Number two. Speaking of saving the world, Antarctica just recorded the coldest temperature since 2017. The tree all the way down to more than 83 degrees below zero Celsius. Yeah, climate change. Number three. It was a very big week in Washington and Delaware. There were whistleblowers on Capitol Hill pointing at the Bidens for illegal activity. And in Delaware, there was a judge willing to blow holes in a dirty backroom plea agreement with the president's son. 
There were also a lot of other things going on. For example, Sam Bankman-Fried, remember him? Well, he got a sweetheart deal as a charge against him involving illegal campaign donations of nearly $90 million, almost exclusively to Democrats that money went. Well, those charges were all dropped. The line they put out there was something about a faulty extradition from the Bahamas. <laughs> really? But magically, it doesn't impact the rest of the case, that faulty extradition from the Bahamas. How convenient is that? All the crooked Democrats get to keep all of their money from a guy who stole billions from unsophisticated investors and even some that were. He stole billions of dollars, but that he took off the top and gave the Democrats, well, that's going to be okay. UFOs were also up for a discussion on Capitol Hill where three star witnesses testified that the United States has a lot of evidence about non-humans and their machines working in our airspace and maybe elsewhere too. And apparently we have the bodies. And we can talk about that. But today, to start, I want to focus on one that may have not gotten a lot of attention this week. That was the hearing Thursday focusing on the twisted leftist idea that somehow gender is just something you can spin the wheel and change. Spoiler alert, you cannot change your gender. Not with surgery, not with drugs, you can't. But Democrats were focused on trying to crush those called to testify. They were hell-bent on tearing them down and trying to recast parents and Republicans as cold-hearted and evil for not embracing the ideas of transgender ideology and gender-affirming care and a whole bunch of other intellectually void ideas. How about this? We're going to start with Congressman Steve Cohen, good-looking fellow of Tennessee, who absolutely admits by accident that men and women are in fact different. He actually admits it in the testimony. He's a sad little man who got totally roasted over a debate of biological men using the women's locker room, you see. Listen to this. I read Ms. Scanlon's testimony. I wasn't here to hear it. And I think Penn didn't deal with your situation like they could have and should have in putting up some type of different barriers in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the women's area of, of the locker room. Ms. Scanlon, we just heard my Democrat colleague, Mr. Cohen, say that your circumstance could have been fully resolved if we'd have just had some barriers up in the, sh in the women's showers. Do, do you think that that's a sufficient way to resolve what we're dealing with here? I think by um, Representative Cohen admitting that we need barriers acknowledges there are biological differences between men and women. And by acknowledging that we need to have private spaces that are separate from each other, why can't we just use the locker rooms that we've always used, the men's and the women's? If you're acknowledging that we need protection and privacy from these men, then you're acknowledging that the locker rooms we've always used are the correct ones. Yeah, that's what he admitted. Oh, you need barriers. Yeah, it's called a door. It's called a locker room. It's called a restroom. Yeah, we have barriers set up already. We have men's room. In men's facilities, women's room, and women's facilities. Pretty clever idea that we've had for, well, uh, as long as I've been alive. He really is a sad and very unattractive little man. In fact, I dare say he is ugly, both inside and out, Steve Cohen. That is a face only a mother could love, and that would be questionable. But then the conversation turned to the question of access for transgendered individuals and what locker rooms and bathrooms they should be using. What sports teams they should be playing on. And at this point, it became very clear how parents on the committee felt about this. It's important. Republican Wes Hunt hammered the idea of men and women sharing locker rooms and targeted Democrats for their wacko idea of men and women playing sports against each other as well. He had a spirited response. Listen to this. Miss Scan, my daughters are going to watch this because you have become their new hero. And I can assure you that my four-year-old and my two-year-old daughters will not change in front of biological men. This is ridiculous. I don't care what party you are a part of. If you think that we're all equal and the same, biologically, you've literally lost your mind. And when my two daughters work hard in the sport, work hard in their craft to be the best that they can be amongst other women, they will compete against the other women. I owe Victoria and Olivia and every other young lady in this country that. If you think I'm wrong, I am not the problem. I can assure you. Yeah, he is just nailing it. Wes Hunt. Congressman, I believe he's from Texas. 
It is shocking, isn't it, that we actually have to waste our time to battle these intellectually and morally bankrupt ideas about gender and gender ideology and whether or not you're born in the right body or the wrong body and all such garbage. It's such garbage, and what is truly frightening is that in some states, if parents try to stop the transition of their child, their parental rights can be stripped and their children ripped from their homes by tyrants and thugs and other uneducated monsters sent by the state to impose the will of the government onto them and their families. This is what George Orwell and Ayn Rand and God warned us about over and over again, and yet the sheep keep flocking together and running full speed over the cliff of abject stupidity. Again, you cannot change your gender or your sex. You can call it, you can call yourself whatever you want. You can claim you're this or you're that. It does not make it so. But nobody's allowed to deviate from the narrative, no matter how deviant the ideas being foisted upon the rest of us really are. You must follow the rules. You must toe the line and adhere to the dangerous cultist idea of gender fluidity and other such fanciful fantasies. And if you fail to fall in line, you will be called out, heckled, discredited, canceled, sometimes flat out attacked. Congressman Matt Gates gets heckled for standing up for parents. Listen to this. They want to stand between a parent and a child on these important decisions. And I don't think it's abuse if a parent says, I'm not going to get my child gender blockers. And, and it's odd to hear you advocate for the law because just moments ago in testimony, you said, and I wrote it down, parents have a fundamental right to make health care decisions regarding their children. But, but if in Washington state today, the parent makes the decision that they're not going to provide that gender affirming care, what it does is it unlocks for the government a window of time to keep the child away from the parent and to not tell the parent where the kid is. Oh, please, get over yourself. What, you know, what, what's terrible is when you have uh, this, this incongruent desire of the government to restrain the ability of parent to parent. And I, I can only imagine the terror that a parent must go through not knowing where their child is, so. Mm. And we've got more. We've got more, more powerful. In fact, we're going to hear from a young woman who transitioned, was butchered under the knife, and then said, my God, what have you done to me? That's straight ahead here on the Steve Group Show.
pick it up. As we continue this conversation about the uh, transgender ideology, this cultist idea that somehow you can just spin the wheel, pick your gender, and parents have kids transitioning before they're 10 in some cases. What happens to all those kids that are told they're right? They're born in the wrong bodies. But we the state and we the doctors, we can fix that, they're told. Just take a handful of these and it will all begin to get better. Take these injections, you'll be right on your way. And wait, there's more because we have much more to say. Cut off some pieces and parts, and trust me, children, we can fix your heart. Come on. Just let us inject and detect and inspect and cut some things off. We'll fix you right up in no time at all. You see, that probably sounds great to an emotional 12-year-old girl, but when that girl later looks in the mirror, what does she see? It's not what was promised and she's truly not free, is she? So what Chloe message? Cole, among those testifying in front of Congress Thursday, she was a victim of liberal pseudoscience that has left her scarred emotionally and physically for life. Here she is. So what message do I want to bring to American teenagers and their families? I didn't need to be lied to. I needed compassion. I needed to be loved. I need to be given therapy to help me work through my issues, not affirm to my delusion that by transforming into a boy, it would solve all my problems. We need to stop telling 12-year-olds that they are born wrong, that they are right to reject their own bodies and feel uncomfortable with their own skin. We need to stop telling children that puberty is an option, that they can choose what kind of puberty they will go through, just so they can choose what clothes to wear or what music to listen to. Puberty is a rite of passage to adulthood, not a disease to be mitigated. Today, I should be at home with my family celebrating my 19th birthday, and instead I'm making a desperate plea to my elected, re my elected representatives, learn the lessons from other medical scandals like the opioid crisis, to recognize that doctors are human too, and sometimes they are wrong. My childhood was ruined along with thousands of detransitioners that I know through our networks. This needs to stop. You alone can stop it. Enough children have already been victimized by this barbaric pseudoscience. Please let me be your final warning. Thank you. Please let me be your final warning. That young woman had a full radical mastectomy at the age of 13. 13 they did that to her. Gave her drugs. Her depression is worth, is worth, she says when she looks in the mirror, she sees a monster. So wake up, my friends, as they try to experiment on all of us, some with garbage vaccines, others with junk science turning boys into girls and girls into boys, plus the idea that if they can just be in charge, they can set the level of the oceans and the temperatures at the farm. Again, they can't. You cannot sit there and idly let this go on. You can't. You have to get involved. It is remarkable to me that at this point in my life, with more information available to more people than ever before by way of smartphones and computers, that we have to sit here and have a conversation like this at all. It's one of the reasons I still keep old world book encyclopedias around so that I can have reference that isn't filtered by the algorithms of Zuckerberg or Musk or anyone for that matter. That I can go find real information. But the bottom line on something like this is so simple. What would your mother have said about such a thing or your grandmother? Oh, that's just stupid. Shush. Move along. That's just, that's just stupid. They, would, they wouldn't have given it the time of day. But you think about this. Follow the money. How much money is being made off the transgender ideology? Surgeries, hormone blockers, all of that cash flowing, just like it did with the COVID-19 vaccines. All of that cash flowing to somebody. It's big money. Make no mistake, it's big money. And in some places now, even telling young people, you know, we should have some counseling here, right? We should have some intervention. That's become illegal. It's become illegal to tell young people, you know, this is not a good path. We need to counsel you through this. 
is becoming against the law in some states. Mm -hmm. Conversion therapy is what they used to call uh, the intervention to talk people about being gay or not being gay. Outlawed uh, this week in Michigan. Well, conversion therapy, I'm going to guess I have not read the laws, but I'm going to guess is going to apply to transgender individuals as well. Listen, uh, young lady, you're not a boy. You're not born in the wrong body. That's probably illegal, punishable by jail time or loss of your license. That's another way the state controls these people. Uh, you'll teach it the way we tell you, or we'll take your license to be a counselor. We'll take your license to be a school teacher. We'll take your license to be a psychiatrist or psychologist. Government control is what that is. But this is sad garbage being fed to our children by way of TikTok, Instagram, and a thousand other places. It's garbage, my friends. I'm not afraid to say it. It's garbage. You cannot pick your gender. Your chromosomes do not change. And these are the things that are lost in the, in, in the hailstorm and the dust storm and the noise and the confusion that is everyday Washington and everyday news cycle. Don't forget about things that are important. Trying to debase what, what men and women are and how glorious it is that men can be men and women can be women. It's a glorious thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a glorious thing. So let's protect our children. You can't do that by just sitting there, all right? All right, we're going to take a break here. Uh, coming up, William Wagner will be here. We're going to talk about the culture and the Constitution and other things impacting us every single day here in America. I'll be right back. This is the most convenient thing. This happened while they were having the UFO hearings, right? This happened. Charges were dropped. I mentioned this to just a few minutes ago. Dropped against a Democrat mega donor, Sam Bankman Freed, who was also, you know, uh, apparently a thief. Campaign finance charges dropped against Sam Bankman Freed, who was accused of misusing customer deposits. He made $90 million in donations. He was second only to George Soros in making donations to Democrats here recently. And, and here's, the, here's the laughable part of it. All right, you ready for this? Prosecutors argued the United States mishandled the process, mishandled the process of extraditing Bank Freed from the Bahamas, writing a letter stating, in keeping with its treaty obligations to the Bahamas, the government does not intend to proceed to trial on the campaign contributions count. Well, if you mishandled the process of extraditing Bankman Freed, wouldn't that impact every case? Not just the $90 million you gave to Democrats, but the good news about this is the Democrats get to keep the money now. They don't have to send it back, you see. How convenient for all those Democrats and the $90 million they got that was scammed by this thief. How convenient. I'm shocked, aren't you? Uh, now a word from one of our sponsors. As central banks in countries like China, India, and Australia begin transitioning to the digital currency, the Federal Reserve, contemplating the same for the United States. With a digital currency, 
That government's going to track everything you do, everything you purchase, everything you get paid, every nickel that comes and goes, they will know everything about your money. They could prohibit you from buying certain things. Oh, I'm sorry, your carbon footprint's too big today. None of that. They could freeze your money or seize your money. These are some of the reasons concerned Americans reach out to Birch Gold. They want to have physical assets independent from the U.S. dollar. Gold. Held in tax sheltered retirement accounts. That's what they want. Learn if gold is right for you. All right, do this right now. Text Gruber to 989898. Text Gruber to 989898, and they'll send you a free information kit on gold. You've got nothing to lose. A plus rating with a better business bureau, thousands of satisfied customers. Please. Text Gruber to 989898. Do it now. Find out about Birch Gold. Could it be right for you? Good chance. Good chance. William Wagner, the professor, up next. I'll be right back. for you equal protection under the law i mean it used to be the way things are don't see it so much anymore now do you william wagner the founder and president of salt and light global and great lakes chess center is going to discuss a few of these things the latest happenings with culture in the constitution the trend of left of the left to resort to violence and left-leaning prosecutors doing nothing about it at all contrast that with the political persecutions and prosecutions of conservatives here are three stories that uh, have come out and uh, William's going to join me on this. Uh, pro-life activists assaulted on video outside of Planned Parenthood uh, in Washington, D.C. say police won't press any charges. 
pro-LGBTQ radicals threaten to kill and dismember the school board chief in Chino Valley, California. Or the parental rights policy. Boy, is she standing up. I really like her a lot. She's really getting it done, Sonia Shaw. And a person assaulted by a Black Lives Matter member while she stood outside a police station in support with a blue line flag. It's all on video with law enforcement witnesses in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the prosecutors, yeah, we're not going to prosecute that. You're assaulted on camera. Nothing. Professor, good to see you again. Hey, good to be back, Steve. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, all over the country, I do think that uh, Sonia Shaw out there in Chino Valley, California, uh, came in, never elected to a position before. She has a spine of steel. Uh, she just said, you, you get out of the meeting. We're taking this back over for parents. We're not interested in your ideology. We're not interested in your nonsense. We're here to educate kids in reading, writing, and arithmetic. Get out. It's beautiful, actually. What are your thoughts today? Well, what's happening is you've got people finally standing up for truth. They're fiercely standing for truth. They're doing it in the right way. They're not doing it violently. You know, people have always understood that parents are in the best position to make uh, decisions for their children, especially with uh, education uh, type of decisions. And when somebody says that out loud, wow, now all of a sudden you are getting, you know, death threats. You're getting your, your pets are going to be threatened to be killed. You're being uh, threatened to be dismembered. You know, this is the kind of thing that's happening around the world. That happened in California, like you said, and then in Washington, D.C. You know, if if you are uh, pro-life, again, here's the good side. People are actually fiercely standing for truth now. They're doing it compassionately and, and with respect. Um, but that when they say that all life has value uh, and that all life should be treated with dignity, uh, including the unborn, all of a sudden you get assaulted. And, and that actually, that assault in Washington, D.C. was actually on video go to. Uh, now, the problem is, is you get these leftist prosecutors then that say, well, you know, I, not everybody is really to be treated equally under the law. So we're not going to prosecute uh, the perpetrator that, you know, attacked you, even though we've got it on video, because we ethically need more evidence or something like that is what, you know, and that's actually what the, uh, I met with the prosecutor in Michigan that had a similar type of situation, that pro-life, uh, and, and I'm sorry, not pro pro pro-police prosecutors trying to support the police carrying a blue flag you know again attacked on video uh we've got eyewitnesses you've got the victim's testimony uh prosecutor refuses to prosecute because you know i ethically need more evidence to pro you know that is just uh a fig leaf covering up uh an electus agenda uh without any equal protection under the law again that's once again well, trying to cancel the constitution Right, right, right. So let me ask you this. You know, I go to a couple of these cases here, the one in, in uh, Washtenaw County, Ann Arbor, Michigan, for example, or the other one where, where it's caught on video, right? And this happens all the time because there's cameras everywhere. You know, if you're in a, a city of any size at all, there's a good chance anything that happens on the streets caught on camera. And if the prosecutor refuses to pursue that, can you pursue it in a civil in a civil action? I would think you could if you're assaulted and you've got video, you can you can go to them civilly and go after their pocketbook. You can do something. You can't just sit there on your hands. We have to be heard. We have to speak up. We have to use the courts to our advantage. Just like the left has used the courts to twist the narrative for years, it's time for us to do the same thing in that regard. Don't you agree? Um, I, I agree with that. In, in addition to that, though, you know, if you're an elected official, you're part of the government and the government's required to treat people equally under the law. And so you, just because you're the wrong color skin doesn't mean and you're a victim of a crime doesn't mean that you don't get to get justice. And so, yeah, of course, these people can go into civil court and they ought to if they can. But a lot of times the the perpetrator may not have, you know, it, it's it's like, you know, trying to squeeze juice out of a. Uh, of a dry nut, you can't get, you know, you can't get anything from them if they don't have any money in the first place. And it costs $85,000 to, you know, bring a trial to, 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 to trial. So, uh, so in some ways, the civil system might not be, you know, viable for a person who has been attacked, you know, and they shouldn't have to, they should be able to have a prosecutor, you know, take, you know, go in and prosecute the criminal conduct. And under most criminal laws, now you have an, a, a right to restitution. So if you have any 
you know, some of these situations down the road may involve hospital stays and stuff. And, and in that situation, you can get restitution after uh, a, a criminal conviction. And so, you know, we've got a long way to go in this country to, to come back to fairness and to come back to constitutional governance under the rule of law. But we're certainly going down the wrong way when victims all of a sudden get to be treated differently under the law just because of their political beliefs or because of the color of their skin. Well, and in fact, I see something even potentially more dangerous, more onerous on the horizon, William, and that is uh, simply this. Um, these states might say, well, that person in Ann Arbor or that person in D.C., they were spewing hate speech. Therefore, we're going to charge them. You, know, you can see how that could be perverted to that point with some of these twisted ideas of uh, destroying the freedom of speech, attacking people for having a belief that's based in, in faith, whether it's Christian, Jewish, Muslim. I mean, look at how much the Muslim community in Michigan has become the enemy of Democrats now for saying we're not going to fly the gay pride flag. We're not doing it anymore. It will not fly in Hamtramck, the only Muslim majority city in America. Now, it didn't say anything about gay rights or gay lifestyles. We will only fly the American flag, the flag of Michigan, and the flag of our city. That's it on, on government property. That's all we're flying. No political flags of any sort. Man, did they get blowback, right? These are the Muslim people of faith, correct? And, and that's the other side of what's going on here. And it certainly is you know, all related. You know, if you can, you know, deny equal protection of the law to your political enemies, and then like in Colorado, or uh, again, you mentioned Michigan, Michigan's got a law uh, in, in going through their legislature right now that, that tries to create expression that the government disagrees with and turn it into criminal conduct. You know, you've got a, a double whammy here. You know, first of all, we're not going to protect you under the law if you're a victim, and we're going to make you a criminal based on your uh, expression of ideas that we disagree with. And so uh, one of the, the good thing that's happening, though, is that people are waking up to it and they're not standing for it. They're, they are uh, fiercely standing for truth, like these uh, examples we've given here this morning. But they're doing it the right way. They're not doing it like Antifa with violence. They're doing it with compassion and respect. And they're doing it with uh, a fierce uh, determination to make sure that truth is spoken. That's what we need. We need to be that's unafraid. We need to yeah. be unafraid. Professor William Wagner, you can find out more at GreatLakesJC.org. GreatLakesJC.org. It's the Constitution. It's the culture. It's Professor William Wagner. Professor, thank you as always. Bless you. Thank you for what you do, Steve. Thank you for being here. Shine light into the darkness. That's what we do here. I'll take a break on this Friday edition of the Steve River Show.
Uh, I'm going to share something with you here. I'll share a lot of things with you. It's Free For All Friday, and I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm, I'm always glad you're here on Free For All Friday, and every other day for that matter. Um, the left likes to talk about how they support the military, which they don't. They like to talk about how they support law enforcement, which, of course, they do not. As you know, they don't. Uh, but here's a little something from yesterday. Every Republican voted in favor of the Veterans Administration helping out vets, and every single Democrat voted against it, believe it or not. It is bite number nine. Listen to this. Go. Just came off the House floor where we voted to appropriate all the veterans programs, to so give money to the veterans program. Every Republican voted yes to fund VA programs. Every Democrat voted no. For months and months, the Democrats have been saying that the, the Republicans do not care about veterans. They've been saying that, exhausting that. And today, on the floor, we voted for it, they voted against it. They're the ones that do not care about our veterans. How can not one Democrat vote in favor of the VA? How can not one Democrat, not one, vote to fund the VA? Ask yourself that. Ask a, a Democrat who's a veteran. Do you realize not a single Democrat in Congress voted to fund the VA? Not one. The ones that care so deeply. Just remarkable. Uh, meanwhile, uh, defending this nation is a very low priority for this administration. It's a low priority, so low, in fact, the Biden administration is suing the state of Texas for putting in those floating barriers in the Rio Grande, which, by the way, pretty clever, I must say. Uh, those big spinning balls, hard to get over, hard to get under. Yeah, those big spinning balls in the middle of the Rio Grande, difficult. Uh, but KJP, Corrine, she goes after the governor of Texas. Yeah, that's it. Attack the governor of Texas for trying to protect his citizens from the flood of illegals that have been unleashed by Joe Biden and his helpless band of criminals in Washington. Listen. Uh, and the only person, the one person that is sowing chaos is Governor Abbott. That's what he continues to do, political stunts in an inhumane way. Uh, he's actively undermining our border enforcement plan, which, again, has the lowest level of unlawful border crossings in over two years. He's making this more difficult. And so he's not operating in good faith here. That's my answer. More than 7 million illegals have come since Joe Biden stumbled into the Oval Office, lost, confused. It's the lowest level in two years. No kidding, I've got a calendar. Let's see, two years ago would have put us in the middle of 2021 when Joe Biden's reckless policies on the border were in full swing for the first time. So, gee, you've mitigated it back to just a little bit less than its high mark when you idiots were in charge in the first place, Kareem. Don't you just wish for once somebody in that room would go, that's stupid, that's not an answer, that's terrible, wouldn't that just be nice for once? All right, so here, if you missed it yesterday, another day, another octogenarian in Washington, barely functioning, and I'm not, re not referring to Joe Biden this time, uh, but Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, Dianne Feinstein, Nancy Pelosi. Oh, the list goes on. Listen to this. Then there's this moment that just happened in a committee meeting today where she seems to need help to vote in that committee meeting. Here is that moment. Say aye. Pardon me? Aye. Yeah. Uh, to say. I, I would like to support a yes vote on this. Um, it provides $823 billion. That's an increase of $26 billion for the Department of Defense. And it funds priorities submitted. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just... Hi. <laughs> 
So that's a part in that committee meeting where they vote on various measures of legislation. You saw what looks like a male staff member go over to the senator because instead of voting, the senator begins what appear to be prepared remarks. And then Patty Murray, a fellow Democrat and the chair of that committee, tells Senator Feinstein to just say aye. And that's what the senator does. So another concerning moment for a lawmaker here caught on camera. Caught on camera, you know, she starts to give a speech there. She has no idea what's going on, what the protocol is. Nancy Pelosi confuses uh, RFK Jr. with JFK and Joe Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy. It doesn't matter, has them all confused. Mitch McConnell this week froze like he was having a stroke. Maybe he did. They'll never tell us, of course. But you've got these elderly people that are incapable of doing the job of of leading this country, of protecting this country, completely incapable of doing it. They're too old. They're too arrogant. They're making too much money to step away. It's ridiculous. It really is. But that is the state of things as, as to where we are right at this moment. That's the state of things right now where we are. <laughs> Pretty frightening, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Uh, now a word from one of our sponsors. Please support those that support this program. If you want to save money on your utilities, well connect is that hybrid geothermal system that connects to your existing heating and cooling system. It is affordable geothermal. You see, by using the well water in your yard, if you have a well in the yard, you use that well water in conjunction with your existing system, and you can save up to 70%. Where I live, the well water comes out at 52 degrees. So right now, during the hottest part of summer, not, not, not climate change, just July, you can get your air conditioning basically for free. In the dead of winter, a state-of-the-art heat pump uses thermodynamics to convert that well water energy into heat. And the only time that your furnace kicks on are on those coldest days of the year. The rest of the time, your well connect does the job. You're welcome using water as its source of energy. It's remarkable. Find out more at wellconnectgeo, wellconnectgeo.com. It's a remarkable system. They're looking for dealers as well anywhere in the north. Let them know. WellConnectGEO. WellConnectGEO.com. I'll be back.
The document Donald Trump was showing these people with zero security clearance was an actual highly classified document. If you missed it, and why this is so important, if is you, uh, this is the one, hmm. if you missed it, Concordia, Antarctica hit 83.2 degrees below zero Celsius. Yeah, how does that grab you? That's a pretty remarkable uh, number, isn't it? Yeah, pretty remarkable number. Uh, Concordia, Antarctica, 83.2 degrees below zero Celsius, lowest temperature in the world since 2017. So, yeah, we have heat waves. We have that going on. Plus, we have the coldest temperature recorded in six years in Antarctica. So, you know, I'm not going to get too worried about it. If you missed it earlier, I mentioned this. I just uh, mentioned it again. Uh, there's a new uh, illness uh, brought on some ticks. It's been around since 2008. Uh, it'll apparently make you allergic to red meat. How frightening is that? Uh, Alpha-gal syndrome known as the red meat allergy or the tick bite meat allergy. Uh, these ticks, a different kind of tick than would give you Lyme disease. Um, it's the Lone Star tick found primarily in southeastern and eastern states. It contains a sugar molecule, the alpha gel, uh, alpha gal, which is injected into the body with a bite. And then when people eat foods containing the allergens, they can experience serious symptoms. Within a few hours, it can be fatal. Because you can have an anaphylactic uh, shock to that. So uh, keep it in mind. Speaking of food, if you'd like to lose weight, my friends, why wait? Just saw a picture yesterday from a guy. He looked like a different human being. Uh, he did. Uh, my friends at My Pure Health Solutions will create a weight loss plan for you. If you've been thinking about it, why wait? You want to fit in your clothes better? You want to drop a couple of the meds? Feel better about yourself? Look in the mirror without going, eh. Don't be afraid of mirrors. Don't be afraid to lose the weight. You can do this. If you call and say, hey, I'm with Gruber, you'll save $100 on any program. Your consultation, absolutely free. All you have to do is go to GruberHealth.com and get started. GruberHealth.com. Go into the weekend saying, hey, you know, maybe I've got a plan. At least make the phone call. It's free to talk to them. You've got nothing to lose except a lot of weight and all that misery. Anyhow, please do it. GruberHealth.com. All right. Uh, in the next hour, Congressman Tim Wahlberg, Greg Stenstrom, the co-founder of Patriot Online, uh, and so much more. Don't go anywhere.